it's Mr. Toops, the Jedi I Believe, and you're here in the Always Believe Room at George Ranch High School. It's going to be a great day because today you will graph functions and define functions with absolute values. Oh, 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 oh. This is something you've never done before, so you are going to have a blast. You will become a better human being after today. So let's go through and start the work. Okay, so this is what your assignment looks like. Okay, so we're going to determine the domain and range of a line of a linear function. I'm sorry, determine the domain and range of a linear function and represent domain and range by using inequalities. Oh, oh, oh. We're going to have a blast. Okay, so let's go down here and get, a, get some eighth grade math review. The domain is the possible x values of a function or it's the input number. The range is the possible y values, or the output values of a function. You input x, you output y. You input domain, you output range. The domain is read from left to right on the x-axis or from smallest to largest domain values. So you read your domain from the left to the right, small to big. The range is Y, so it goes up and down. The range is read from bottom to top, or on the Y axis, or from the smallest to the largest range values. So you read your range from the bottom to the top. Okay? When you write the domain and great range from the greatest least to greatest values, you will always use a less than symbol, I'm sorry. You will always use a less than symbol in your representation. So always use less thans when, write, when writing down the domain and range. Okay, so let's look at this one. Okay, really quickly, I know what these values are. If you count up here, this number right here would be 10 and this number right here would be five. Lucy Claire has $10 and spent $2 each day for lunch. So if she has 10 bucks, she starts off at 10, and every day she's going to go down to over one inch. And then what happens on the fifth day? On the fifth day, five times 10 is 10, and 10 minus 10 is zero in it. So on the fifth day, she runs out of money. Now then, this ordered pair right here would be zero, zero. So let's put zero right here. Okay, this would be our domain, because it's the X. This would be our range. So this is going to be pretty simple to do. In this problem, the domain would equal to the number of days, and the range would be the dollars. From right, left to right, the domain from left to right would go from zero to five, would The domain would go from zero to five, so from zero days to five days. This is how you will write your domain and range from now until you stop taking math classes. So the domain starts at zero and it goes to five. This is how you write a number is between zero and five. Zero is less than or equal to x, it's less than or equal to five. This is how you write a number is between zero and five. Notice we're using less than symbols. Zoom in on it. So zero is less than x, less than five. That means that the domain is between zero and five. Now then let's look at the range. <clears throat> Remember the range, you go from the bottom to the top. So the range would go from zero to 10, would it? Okay, so the range would go from zero, and this wouldn't be days, it would be dollars. The range would go from zero dollars to $10, right? As an inequality, this would be zero to 10. So zero less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 10. This is how you say your y is between zero and 10. You always write it this way. Smallest number on the left, largest number on the right, and you're gonna have your inequalities. The independent variable of this function, the independent variable is your input or the days, and the independent variable would be the dollars. So you have your independent variable and your dependent variable. Oh, 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 now then let's go to number one. This is gonna be a blast. 
Okay, something you need to learn on this. To generate your linear equation, I'm going to teach you to do this. Write this down. Y equal GX plus S. I'm going to zoom in right here. Y equals GX plus S. This is our slope. This is our y-intercept. But in a word problem, this will be your growing number. And this will be your starting number. So our growing number goes in front of the x and our starting number's here. If you read this problem, you're going to be able to tell me the growing number and the starting number. So Jimmy John has $15. He spends $3 to ride each ride. What would be the starting number? It's kind of easy because he starts off with $15. What would be the growing number? $3 each ride. His number won't get bigger. It will get what? Smaller because he's spending his money, right? So since he's spending his money, his growing number is not positive, it's what? Negative, and he starts off with 15. Does this make sense? So he starts off with 15 bucks, and each ride he rides, he spends three bucks. Someone in here can figure out how many rides he could do. That's right, he could ride five rides. After five rides, he's out of money. So the slope of the line is negative three, and it represents this right here. $3 to ride each ride. So it's $3 per ride. The way you write your slope, this is important, it's going to be a number and then you write down Y per X. So my Y label will be dollars, my X label will be rides. That's what I'm comparing. I'm comparing dollars to rides. Your slope is written down, whatever your slope is, then you write down your y-axis word per your x-axis word, or your range per domain. Slope is y over x, okay? So let's go and graph this. Where are we going to start at? At 15, right? I don't know if this goes up to 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 18. 15 would be up here. So put, put a dot, put 15. And now then at five days, he's going to have zero bucks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put a dot right here, put five, and then just connect them. Doesn't have to be an accurate graph, and then put zero. Now then label the axis. So the X is gonna be the rides, and the Y is gonna be the dollars. So what's my range gonna do? My range is gonna be zero dollars to fifteen dollars, and my domain will be zero rides to five rides. Does this make sense? Okay, y'all did not write the domain and range last year. So let's go over to number three. What would the y-intercept of the graph be? The y-intercept is 15 in it. What does that 15 represent? The 15 is the what number? It's the starting number, right? That is your starting amount. The x-intercept is five in it. Now then, this is how I would write this down. Five rides equals zero dollars. So what happens at five rides? You're out of money, right? At five rides, you terminated all your money. So let's write down the domain. The domain starts at zero and goes to five. And remember, to write it, you use less than or equal symbols, and the domain is your X. Piece of cake in it. Let's write down the range. The range is gonna go from zero up to 15, right? So the range goes from zero to 15 from zero to 15, and we're gonna put the less than symbols again. You always put less than symbols, but we won't put X, we will put Y. Oh, 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 what a blast. Fun stuff. <sighs> okay, let me see. All of these go down, I think they do. All of these go down. Okay, let's go to number 19. Okay, on 15, this is going to be kind of funky because this is the only one that does this, I think. Okay, number 19 is going to be kind of weird. Okay, this is the only one that's going to do this. All of the others, the line's going to go down, so you just repeat what we just did. But on 19, something's different. What would be the growing number and the starting number? So on this one right here, Emma Sue is saving up money for the homecoming dress. Oh, oh, oh. she's going to Palais Roll. She's going to get fancy. Ah, ah, ah. 
Right now she has 20 bucks. I can zoom in on this. So she has 20 bucks. That's going to be our starting number. Okay? And she makes $3 every time she washes a car at the car wash. So her, her money won't go down. It will go up. So this right here would be her growing number. Her growing number won't be negative. It will be correct. It's going to be positive. So let's write down our equation. Our equation will be 3x plus 20 won't it? So every time she washes a car, her car, her value is going to go up in it. The slope of the line is 3. And then what is this comparing? It's comparing dollars and car washes in it. So it's $3 per car wash. So the dollars would be my Y, right? Let me do this in a different way. The dollars is going to end up being my Y, and the car wash is going to be my X. So you always write down slope. Is your slope, then Y per X. So the dollars would go on the Y axis, the car washes would go on the X axis. Now then over here, we can't go up to 20, so this is what I want you to do. Okay, just draw a dot right here and put 20 to the right. Now then, what's going to happen to this graph? Will it go up or down? It's going to go up, right? And just draw the line going up. And this is going to be car washes. And this is going to be dollars. Okay? So notice the domain is going to start at zero, but it's never, ever going to end, right? It's going to keep going and going and going, right? So it's going to be infinity. The range starts at 20, but it never ends. It's going to go to infinity. So this is the first time in your life you graphed infinity. Oh, 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 you get more power when you deal with infinity, and you get to draw lazy eight. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, what would the y-intercept of the graph be? The y-intercept is 20. In it. And what does the y-intercept represent? It's the starting amount. So the starting of $20 is the starting amount. What would the x-intercept of this be? The graph would not have an x-intercept. It does not have an x-intercept, so write down none. And then why she does not run out of money. In this problem, she will never have zero dollars because she's not spending the money. So that kind of makes sense. Since she's only gaining money, it only goes up. Okay, now then let's write our domain. Our domain starts at zero, but it never ends. So we're going to put zero, and this is how you write infinity. You put a lazy eight. Oh, oh, oh. And then you put less than or equal to an x, right? So the x values can go from zero to infinity. That's how you would write that, okay? The domain is zero to infinity. The range will not start at zero, will it? The range does not start at zero. It starts at 20 and goes up. So our range is going to start at 20, be less than or equal to Y. Huh? You put range for the Y, and it's going to go to infinity also. So this is the only graph where you're going to have infinity. All the others go down. Any questions? It's kind of, kind of weird having an infinity in there. You've never done this before. Now then, let's go to this page. This is kind of fun. Okay. This is how I would do this. On your graph, let's do this one first. Notice that this has an arrow tip, so we're going to have infinity. So do this. Go up. Use your pen or pencil. Go up and draw a dot right here, and then go over and draw a dot right here. Okay. So you want to find out where this graph ends and begins on the X and Y axis. So the domain is my X's, right? So my X's start right here and they go to the right and they will never ever stop, one day. So my domain starts at the negative four and it goes to infinity and I put less than or equal symbols. So find out your domain is gonna be your X's. The range is gonna go from the bottom to the top in it. Where does my range start? At negative two. It will never ever end, so it's gonna to go to infinity. So I'm going to put less than or equals to. Oh, fun stuff. Okay, let's do this one. Notice on this one, they don't have arrow tips. 
Okay, so draw dots on the X and Y axis. So this goes to here, to here, and this is closed. There's a, gonna learn this. Then it goes to here, and then it goes up to here, right? So my X's go from here to here, and my Y's go from here to here. Everyone with me? My X's go from here to here, and my Y's go from here to here. So this number is negative three, and this number is five. But notice that negative three has an open dot. We won't put less than or equal, we'll only put less than. This is a closed dot, so we'll put less than or equal to. Now then, where does my range go? My range goes from here to here, doesn't it? So my range starts at negative five, and it goes up to negative one. And then this dot's open, so it gets a less than symbol, and this dot's closed, so it's gonna get a less than or equal to. So if you have an open dot, you use a less than symbol. If you have a closed dot, you use, the, you use a less than or equal to symbol. Wow, what a blast. Okay, let's go to a curve. Let's do this one. Oh, let's do this one. So remember, we're putting dots on the x-axis and on the y-axis. So the x-axis goes from here to here, doesn't it? So my x-axis will it's be an open dot and a closed dot. And then on the y-axis, from the bottom to the top. So the y-axis is going to go from here, and this is the top of the graph to here. Notice that this dot will not be in the range, will it? It's going to go all from here to here. Okay, so my domain starts at negative 4 goes to 1. Doesn't it? So I'm going to put negative 4 to 1. The negative 4 is an open dot, right? So it gets a less than symbol. And the top or the right is 1, it gets a less than or equal to. Now then look at your range. The bottom number of your range is negative five. And we're gonna put less than or equal to because of closed dot. And then it goes up to four, doesn't it? Notice that the four, it can equal four, couldn't it? So we're gonna put a less than or equal. So this open dot does not go into the range because it goes from here to here. This point right here takes care of the open dot, okay? Wow. And let's do this one. This was kind of tricky. So this one right here, this arrow keeps going. So you can extend the arrow if you want. Now then on the x-axis, let me do another color. Let's do green. This goes from here and then just draw an arrow tip right this. This graph will never end going, it's gonna keep going down and down and down in it. So if it does that, draw an arrow tip. Now then, the y-axis will not end going down, will it? It's gonna keep going down and down. So I'm gonna draw an arrow tip right here, but the top is right here. Okay, everyone with me, this is kind of tricky. Y'all never done this before, so you will get better. Remember, the domain is your x's, the range is your y's. So the domain is gonna go from negative four to infinity. In so negative four to infinity, and then you use this is going to be a closed dot in it. So less than or equal to, less than or equal to. Infinity will always have less than or equal to. Now then the Y's, does the Y's ever stop going down? It's going to go to infinity going down, but it won't be positive infinity. It will be negative infinity. So this is the way you write it, negative infinity. What if the range kept going this way? It would be negative infinity, right? So if the range goes to the left or the domain keeps going down, it's negative infinity. And then the range stops at four. And then we're gonna put less than or equal signs. Y'all have never done this before. So just mark your X and Y axis where the graph starts and stops, small to big, and plug in the less than or equal twos or the less thans. And let's do this one. This will be, let's do a curvy one. On this one right here, it's gonna have infinity to infinity in it. And the range will go from negative infinity to stop right here. But the domain will go from infinity to infinity. Okay, you do that later. Let's do this one. Okay, our domain go from left to right. So our domain starts here with an open dot and it goes here with a closed dot, doesn't it? And then our range starts here with an open dot and goes up to here with a closed dot, doesn't it? So our domain will go from left to right. So our domain is gonna go from negative four 
all the way to positive 5. Okay, now then, this is an open dot, so it's going to get just a less than symbol. This will get less than or equal to. The range goes from negative 5 to positive 4, does it? This is an open dot, so it gets a less than symbol, but the 4 is going to get a less than or equal to. And bam, you define your domain and range. Oh, 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 oh. That's graphing with more power. Okay, you're going to do the others very similar. Remember, if you have arrow tips, you're going to have infinity, right? On this one right here, the domain is going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? And the range is going to go from negative infinity, and I'm going to let you finish this, and we'll stop right here, won't it? Okay, you don't have any more left. Have fun identifying the domain and range. Enjoy reading about Bubba Bob, Emma Sue, Lucy Claire, and Jimmy John. They're pretty cool people. Have a wonderful day. Remember, always believe in one of the favorite, most favorite pictures I've ever taken. You are awesome.